Tonight's experiment is about how easily we can be manipulated. Can an innocent person be persuaded to confess to a murder that he hasn't committed? We all fall prey to unnecessary guilt. Guilt has been used as a tool to manipulate us throughout history. The church has encouraged all manner of damaging guilt around the notion of sex, and feelings of guilt and shame are the primary modern causes of depression. To break free from it, we need to first see how it can take us in its grip. To do so tonight, we need an innocent person, a really nice guy. Well, our innocent person is called Jody. He's on his way here now. We've invited him to a completely fabricated conference. He has no idea it's anything to do with me and no idea that everybody he's going to meet here is an actor. And I'm going to use them to trigger a series of events which will hopefully compel him to confess to a murder that hasn't even happened. <laughs> So this is Jody, as we first met him a few weeks ago, when we auditioned various people to be in my shows without telling any of them what it was going to be about. I work with children. Um, I work in a Sure Start centre for children under five. Do I enjoy it? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. We also secretly contacted his friends and family to find out more about him. Everyone that meets him instantly loves him. Jody is the kind of brother who you can turn to in a time of need and he'll always be there. He just he just loves being with people and he likes making people happy. It's clear that Jody is the least likely person to ever commit a murder. Now he has seen my shows and is aware of what he might be getting himself into. He's also been screened to make sure he would be psychologically robust enough to take part. So working with his family and friends we told him that he'd failed the audition. And then weeks later, we posed as organisers of a special weekend seminar and invited him to this historic country house hotel. Now, Jody will be here soon, so I've got to go and hide myself to enjoy tonight's experiment. Over the next few days, this house will host Student Futures, a seminar about getting students successfully into the workplace. We've invited Jody to give a talk on life as a recent graduate, and so far, he believes every word. During his stay, he'll be filmed by 21 covert cameras and one crew on the ground that Jody will be told is filming a promotional video of the event. Go to as tight a shot as you can on the group around the sofa. From my control room behind the stable block, I'll be able to observe an army of actors who I've spent days training in the guilt-mongering techniques necessary to manipulate Jody into confessing to a crime that he hasn't even committed. Hello there, all right? Welcome to Bradley House. My name's Daniel. I'm the house manager. Steve White. I've created a cast of characters to speak at the fake event. There's the entrepreneur, Steve White. The Reverend Jenny Green. Professor Alice Plummer, Miss Scarlett Evans, the retired Colonel Sir Robert Coleman, and not forgetting our future murder victim, Dr. Patrick Black. Here he comes, here he comes. Yeah, let's follow up on camera three, please. Good luck, everyone. OK, depending on where Jody goes, uh, let's follow him up on camera one. Could I take your name, please? Jody Rosagin. Rosagin, Mr. Rosagin, there we go. And you are staying uh, with us tonight in, in uh, Bradley House itself. OK, ISO 2, uh, give me a wide shot. OK, if there's anything that I can help you with, don't hesitate to ask. OK. Uh, and I'll just take you through to the library here. John and Mark, who are the, uh, the conference organisers, are here. Uh, that's John standing up there. Hi, how are you? Hi, Jody, John. Yes. Nice to meet you, mate. Come Hi. on in. How are you doing? I run my own business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you're all really nervous. So what do you do at Plymouth? I did do a social work degree. I've just oh, finished it. brilliant. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve. Oh, hi, Jody. Ah, nice to meet you, Jody. Yeah. Really you well, welcome again, everyone. It's, uh, it's lovely to have you all here. It's a couple of quick, short parish notices, basically. First of all, there are a couple of areas that are out of bounds, I'm afraid. We've got a few offices uh, that are working out of the stable block. So, basically, the, the, anything at the rear of the house is pretty much out of bounds. Um, local amenities. 
If you go into the village itself, Maiden Bradley, all that's there is a post office and a police station. So if you need anything, the best idea is to come and see us and, uh, and we'll provide everything that you need. OK, so let's begin the experiment. So there are three things that I need to do in order to make Jody confess to that most horrible of crimes, a murder and one that he didn't commit. And the first one is to create some triggers that I can fire to make him feel guilty whenever I want him to. So the way we're going to do that is to create some situations where he will feel guilty, and then whenever he's at the peak of that guilt, uh, the actors are going to squeeze him on the shoulder, or I'm going to um, fire a, a sound of a bell off through the hotel, which I can do by pressing, uh, pressing the button on here. That creates a bell sound that will play through the hotel. Now, what will happen is he'll begin to associate the feeling of guilt with the squeeze on the shoulder and with the bell sound. And then I'll be able to fire those off to make him feel guilty. And that's just like when you hear a song that you first heard when you broke up with somebody, and then whenever you hear it again, it just makes you feel awful. And so what will you talk about tomorrow? I'm not 100% sure because, again, I'm not sure what's required of me. So what's going to happen next is the course organisers are going to take Jody out into the corridor and then they're going to make him feel guilty. They're going to start that off. So uh, we just need the sound nice and clear on that because I'm going to I'm going to play the bell sound in the hotel. OK, just cheers. Babble in your speech. Hey, mate, just want to double check, like, you've got everything for your speech tomorrow. I, I expect probably what I'll do is talk a little bit about the things that I've done. John, I've just been I haven't invited uh, Alex Better in. I feel awful about this. Oh, no, it's that it. horrible. <laughs> that <sick laughs> feeling, you know, when you get right, guilty right. in your stomach. <laughs> when do you get that, though? Yeah, like, when yeah, you feel yeah, guilty, yeah, where, where yeah. does it sort of, It kind you know, of just stays there, you know, just keep a hold of it. It's in the gut, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. But you feel sick. You feel, like, physically Well, sick. I feel sick, but I get a dry mouth. What do you get? A dry mouth as well. A dry mouth. I get flaws I got, like, a... It's awful, isn't it? In your... It's in the pit. In the pit. I don't know. Pit your stomach. So are you are you all right about the speech tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. Don't don't yeah. write yourself up over it. No, it's no, like, no, honestly, no. Really, like, obviously there's some really like, incredible speakers that don't they've been guilty. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah, all, 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 all right, it'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. I'm gonna say, I think... So hopefully we've started to get Jody to associate the feelings of guilt with the squeeze on the shoulder and the sound of the bell. Now, normally those feelings of needless guilt come because we've transgressed some rule laid down by a, an authority figure, whether it's a parent or God or whoever it is. So we need an authority figure, somebody that Jodie really admires. We know that he's a big fan of the Australian comedian and musician Tim Minchin. So Tim is here to provide some entertainment at the conference, but to also play a major part in Jodie's conditioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go as far as I want. I'm just, what I'm not doing is saying, no, there was nothing. I was like, I missed it. Jodie has no knowledge that his hero is coming tonight. Nice to see you, You're all right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice to see you. Yeah, good. Good. So glad you made it. Hi. Sorry. Hi. This is Tim. Hi, This is Jodie and Ellie. Do you know what the most surreal thing is? That I've actually got a DVD of yours in my... In your bag. suitcase. In your suitcase? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a little bit. That's, That's a little, a little bit. bit yeah. yeah. OK, so the plan tonight is to make Jody feel that he has really offended somebody that he massively admires. And that will create a very powerful feeling of guilt and further embed those guilt triggers. Oh, I've been studying so hard in the last year of my final year of university. I was disappointed because I wanted to come and see you in London. Oh, right. I right. know you were getting me in London yeah. recently. And uh, when are you when are you next going to be in England? It'll probably be a while before I do another tour. Right. Right. Damn. Good. OK, so although Jody's done nothing wrong, the actors are now going to make him feel really guilty. I think he just looks at him. Oh, my God. He did look a bit upset. His face changed a bit. It like, it was, yeah. What did I say? It sounded very much like you said, don't be a And that's when his face changed yeah, and he yeah, walked off, did. didn't he? It did. It really did. I, I, you know, you, I, I, I mean... Might use that sort of language at home, but, you, no, but I, I would find that really quite offensive. Oh, I mean, as well. I'm sure you called him a. I didn't even mean to say that. I didn't say it. I didn't even know what I was saying. You might have said I must hunt have said, or, or, yeah. or I don't know why you'd say hunt, but it might have been. I thought he was it, just... You were feeling bad. I feel I mean, terrible. Just, he looked quite upset. He terrible. did. Um, I'll be two minutes. Are we okay? With the longer hair. Oh, you mean Mr. Minchin? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think he's just popped out for a few minutes. He's popped outside. Uh, I think I'm so. Sure I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure which way. Okay. 
Is he, is he going off to find something? Oh, don't, oh, no. don't go out. Don't go outside. Ali. Go Nick is left. Please. We don't want him coming round here. Nick, get him back inside the house. He might head round to where we are. Guys, keep an eye on those cameras. See if he's coming around the front. Um, well, he might not come down. I, I, I fear I'm mad. You right, mate? Yeah. We were just having a conversation with Tim, um, and we were talking, and I thought it was all casual and pleasant, and then suddenly he walked off, and the reverend said that it sounded like I said to him that he was a Next, uh, Holly, his girlfriend, is going to give him a call, and we'll be able to find out now how he's how he's really feeling. Holly is in on this, by the way. How are you? How's it going? Um, yeah, um, okay. A little bit weird. Um, there's kind of good things and bad things. Uh, we've we've got some comedy. Any good? It's Tim Minchin. He just kind of appeared out of nowhere, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe it. I've been speaking to him all night. And then Tim just kind of wandered off. He just walked off. What did I say? And they said, well, it, it sounded like you called him a What? And I was like, I said, I said, what? I would never say such a thing. That's probably just a big misunderstanding and it'll blow over. Well, it is. It is. That's the point. It is a big misunderstanding. Whatever I said, I never meant to say anything offensive. I hope you enjoy the rest of your... Sonny can't go any worse. Poor old Jody, and he has no idea just how much worse his weekend is going to get. So, uh, with phase one now complete, we can make Jody feel guilty whenever we want him to with our triggers. And the second phase is now to make him doubt his own memory so that later on he can be confused as to whether or not he might have done something to feel guilty about. Uh, and the way we're going to do it is by creating a series of inexplicable changes around him, uh, beginning with Dr. Black's red tie. So don't underestimate the power of networking. So Dr. Black will start talking about networking and then start handing out application forms. Then you're looking at a situation where 50 people in that group become 500 contacts. So, so he's handing out the application oh, forms. Excuse me, camera four. His tie is going to change color as he does this, so we'll need to be on that. I started going to this guy's meetings, started listening to what he had to say about employing younger college graduates, trying to understand exactly what he was looking for. Now, give me your attention for just one second. One of the issues with uh, effective listening, I think, is, is that we believe the literate more than the oral. If it's written down, we seem to think that it's more important the point is, you don't notice, but it, it'll, it's just to make him so I think if any of you, if suddenly start to question his capacity to mem remember things properly. Thank you so much for your warm welcome. I'm not sure it's deserved yet, but um, I'm Alice Plummer, and I am a professor of theatre in uh, the University of Glasgow. He's seen that this is what Alice is wearing today. She's been wearing this at breakfast and everything as well. So she's, he's had plenty of time to absorb that. That's, that's what she's wearing. Yeah. Um, interview techniques. We've got preparation. Here we go. Are we on it? Can we be on it? Prepare, prepare yep. to fail. You know that. That's the key. Appearance is what I'm wearing. Presenting me well. Relaxation. They want you to be <laughs> the one. Meet them with confidence. It's the one thing that students don't. I think they're doing brilliant work, and I'm, I'm absolutely honoured to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Jodie, if you want to come up. OK. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. OK. Let's see you on the screen. While Jody's giving his talk, I'm going to sneak into the house and mess around with one of the rooms he's become most familiar with. As a student, as a
tomorrow all day. So most of the changes have been quite subtle up to this point, but we're going to see how he reacts to something that happens right under his nose. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry, Dan. Just to get clarification from what you said earlier, um, you said the size of the bottles. Bottles. No, not late. Okay, no, sorry. Wait, wait, one second. Sorry. If, if. So, uh, you don't have to worry about any of that. And I'm suddenly minus half of my fish. I don't remember you. It's just gone. No, 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 no. I must have eaten it. I must have eaten it all. I just did not. I just thought I had a bit left. OK, so we now need a dry run for the murder itself, just to make sure that everything's working. So down the house, manager's going to come in and say that the Duchess's priceless pearl necklace has been stolen. And uh, Jack's going to say that he saw Jodie with it earlier on, uh, which, of course, isn't true. And um, it's to see now whether a combination of Jodie doubting his own memory, to the extent that he might question whether or not he could have had it, and the guilt that I'm going to trigger by setting off the bell sound, will be enough to make Jodie believe that he could have actually stolen it and then go and confess to it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, sorry. Uh, an item of jewellery has gone missing. It's a pearl necklace. Normally, it's kept in a, in a display cabinet behind uh, locked doors, but for some reason, that particular cabinet has been unlocked for the last few days. Um, so, if anybody has found anything... Jodie, was that the one um, you had last night? In the class? You were just holding it by the, by the window in the drawing room. Absolutely. You were definitely, definitely holding it. I'm not saying you should it, but you were holding it last night. You know, three, three sets of pearls and, and it had a, kind of, had a kind of clasp on it. If you do see it, then please come and find me. I'll probably be around the desk. John to send Jodie up to this room to get the shirt. I'll grab my shirt. Oh. I'm gonna go, yeah, that's right, mate. Right. Here we go, here we go. Oh, we know he's feeling guilty, he's hidden it. Give the shirt to John. That's who he was getting it from. You're okay, aren't you? All right, yeah. I don't know. 
don't look okay. <laughs> funny. Do you? Yeah. Why is that? Let's get a tight two shot on camera six. Yeah. yeah. Jack said that he saw me with them last right. night. Okay. I don't remember having them. Right. I'm sure I've never seen him in my life. You have them in your room? I don't know how they got there. Oh, that's okay. No, that's all right. Just go and get them and say they found them. Who do I give them to? Give them to, um, to the Dan. Manager. Give them to me if you like. I'll say I found them. No, no, I should do it myself. Are you sure? What if it was me that took them? Then? It was me that took them. Yeah, I should really. He's questioning it, isn't he? He's even going upstairs, doubting his own memory. Thanks. I won't say anything. Of course. It looks like the dry run to get Jody to confess to something he hasn't done is working. He's responded well to the guilt trigger. We've managed to make him doubt his own memory, and he's starting to believe he took the pearls, which we know he didn't do. What if it was me that took them? Because he's confused by events, young, compliant, and exposed to fake information, he fits exactly the profile of the thousands of people who make false confessions to the police every year. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Oh, no, don't worry. It's absolutely terrible. All right, that's absolutely fine. We'll just say that we've we, we found them. Don't worry. Thank you so much. Go and walk out Thank and stay you. on camera one Thank and see That's great. I'm, I'm, I am going to go through oh. and, and see them. OK, so phases one and two are now complete. We can make him feel guilty whenever we want by using the triggers and he's doubting his own memory. Third phase is to now give him a sense of a motive. Nothing, nothing serious, but just enough that will play on his mind uh, later on. So I've asked Dr Black to be pretty rude and obnoxious to people within Jody's earshot, and he's been doing that since he arrived. What was it about you that made you think you didn't need a suit for this weekend? See what I mean? You behave like this to your family too, sort Leave of gorilla my push family out of it. Come on, Patrick. Let's try to get a hold of yourself. You've had a little too much drinks. You are someone else. Really, really fucking someone Phyllis, else. Phyllis, relax. Now we're going to um, create a further possible motive in Jody's mind over a game of croquet. Two giants of croquet. Let's go. Whip his ass, Jody. <laughs> Uh, grab your weapons. I'm bash somebody's head in with this thing. <laughs> you got your wallet with you? You got 20 quid in there? I'll put the 20 against everything in my wallet. Shit. The rules are flexible. Good work. Aren't you in that left room over there? Anyway, kid. I was looking at him and he was, you know, he was... I didn't even say it. Apparently, um, Patrick was cheating. What, and he took your money? How he... sad is that, that he felt like he had to cheat on a but, game of croquet? Yeah. Bloody hell. No need for that, is there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. There's no limit to what they can order, is there? Fantastic. I've told the actors to get Jodie drunk. It's important. Have the champagne. Go on, lad. There is no problem. You can eat chan, Jodie. Look at you. No, I haven't. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. I was five and he was six. Ah. We rode on horses made of yeah. six. <laughs> you were black and I were white. He would always swim in the fight, bang, bang. He shot me down, bang, bang. I hit the ground, bang, bang. That awful sound, bang, bang. My baby shot me. <laughs> It's five o'clock in the morning, and for the next stage to work, I need to talk to Jody remotely while he's asleep. Now, that would normally wake him up, but what I'll be telling him are instructions to remain asleep. 
And because I know that he's an open and compliant and therefore fairly suggestible person, this should keep him in a sort of a mid-state between wake and sleep, a dreamy state of, in, uh, of inertia called a hypnopompic state. And uh, I need him to be there because I need him to remain asleep while we get him into position. Jody had a lot to drink last night as well, which makes it easier. We've wired up the television in his room so that we can play in a recording of my voice. Jody, you can hear my voice, but you can continue to sleep. You can sleep, Jody, sleep nice and deeply. I want you to remain nice and deeply asleep. It's just a dream of my voice. You will remain asleep. Okay. Yep, he's coming down. This is where we want him to start doubting his own memory as to what happened early this morning. Here he comes. Thank you. to breakfast. Brilliant. No problem. Here he is. Hey. 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 Jody, Jody. 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 Come down here. How are you doing, lad? What? Uh, <coughs> what was going on? A little late. You, you slammed your door at like five in the morning. <laughs> woke Ellie and I up. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You were in your dressing gown. <laughs> I, I put my head out because it was really loud. I was like, are you all right? And you, you were like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. When you were stood at the, stood at the front in a dressing gown and I thought, I'm going back to bed, it's 5 a.m. <laughs> Jody, what were you doing? You don't remember. Maybe you were... I, I was outside. I know that. You know you were outside. Yes. When I've drunk champagne before, I do yeah, have a tendency to forget. Yeah. He's starting to buy it, isn't he? Yeah. That's good. Did you see Patrick? Because he Where goes for a walk, doesn't he? Have you seen, have you seen Patrick? No. It's Patrick be about. No, he, he gets up early. <laughs> All right, morning, everyone. Very rowdy this morning. Yes. Welcome, and thank you for yesterday, guys. Uh, Are we ready to spring our bombshell? OK, this conference he thinks is here for is about to become rather nasty. Yesterday.
I just wanted to sort of go uh, to finish with kind of where I was. Sorry, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've got an important announcement to make. Um, will you all just, uh, I'll kindly ask you to remain in the building, please. Please don't leave. Uh, following an incident last night, um, the police would like to come and talk to you. Uh, I, can't, I can't really give any more details than that, I'm afraid. What do you mean, incident? You mean like a robbery? Well, I, can't, I can't really, I can't I really go. I found a in... body on my way. Into work there, there, there was there was a body There's found been a murder. there was a body found on the grounds body. last night. Um, can't really go into any more details than that. Uh, but please do remain in the building. Was it? Well, who? Um, I think it was the American guy. It's Patrick Black. Uh, we can't be sure. The police the police will confirm and the police will give you all the information that you need. Now, at least remain in the building, preferably in this room, if I could. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Detective Inspector Palmer. This is my colleague, D.S. Sykes. As you appreciate, I understand you've just been told the news that uh, there is a, has been a death overnight here, and we have to be treating this as suspicious. We need to speak to everyone, and uh, we will be speaking to you individually. We will have a duty solicitor present, just in case you want to speak to them. All the conditioning stages of the plan are coming together. You can see the, the, the guilt and the memory doubt and the, the motive all surfacing in his mind. But I want to see what the actors think. So while they're going for their uh, interviews, I'm going to go and talk to them because he's looking quite stressed. Uh, Mr. Stephen White, please. <sighs> It's all quite emotional, isn't it? See, it's just mm. totally real for him. Yeah. He's definitely just in, you know, in that kind of shock. Yeah. Of not knowing what's happening. You're right, Jodie. Are you sure? Reverend Jenny Green. That's me. That's me. He's not feeling very well. Just very, very quiet. You can sort of see him. See the cogs turning yet? Yeah. No, 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 no. No, they're not trying to trick you or no. catch you out. Could I have Ellie, please? But he was reassured by Jenny saying, well, they don't ask you any hard questions. And mm. Alice was saying, don't make anything up. Just tell them what you know. If you don't know it, don't say anything. He was like, right, yeah. No, we've got... Got here, right? Okay. At, like, five or something. Yeah. Jody just sort of suddenly lost all his, lost all his colour. You all right, man? Could I have Jody, please? Jody? Oh, come through. All right. He's really, how's he's, doing? he's really beginning to put jigsaw pieces together from last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see how he gets on with the um, detectives. Come on through. Put yourself in there. Oh, Mr. Sutton, for a second, is it? Yes. This is um, Mr. Barron, who's the duty solicitor. Yeah. Yeah. If you'd like to just take a yeah. seat, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Sure. You okay. Well, all we're trying to do is to find out exactly what happened to sure. uh, to you know uh, Thomas Black. How, how did you actually get on with with um, Doctor Black? We were we were okay. Yeah. Sometimes he kind of he could be quite blunt. Um, sometimes he was a bit rude. Right. Do you, do you drink a great deal? Are you in, you know... Um, Not usually. No? No. What about last night, did you? You know, I, I had a few, I had a few drinks last yeah. night and the night before. Yeah. Um, you know... I and how did you sleep th last night then? Was that, that okay? Last or? night I slept the best I've ever slept in my life. I think really? Like, you know, He's not mentioning it. Yeah, I was out like a light yeah. and... Um, they had to knock on my door in the morning. Wow. Um, to say breakfast was being served. But yet, people know. say they saw you walking around the house. What, what was that all about? I honestly don't know. Do you, do you suffer with memory loss normally? Sometimes, um, when I've drunk champagne, 
um, in the past, yes. I have had some memory loss. OK, so let's perhaps put our cards on the table here. What happened this morning? Which Where did you wake up? <laughs> I woke up outside. And yet you said just now that they had to knock on your door for breakfast at 9 o'clock. Well, yeah, well, I went back to bed. Right. And you woke up outside, but you, how did you get there? Do you, do you know? OK, uh, Mr Rosuggan, um, I'm very grateful for you to come in um, and we'll work our way through all the others and have a chat with them. And, uh... Are you sure you're right? You look like maybe you want to Is, say something. Um... That's all right, Jodie. It's it. OK. All right. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. I'll walk Cheers. back through with you. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Nick, he hasn't confessed. Can we... Um, can we get the police out of there? Thank you. Can we get the police out? He just needs a bit more time, I think. He's going to leave. He's going to leave. That's OK. He's leaving the front door. No cameras outside? We see through a window? Yeah, we see through a window. Can we go through a window, please? Nick, we can't see him and he's gone. He's running down the path towards the entrance of the gate. He's running off sides. Hello. He's gone to the police station in the village. Right, So what, what's been happening? A uh, friend of ours, was, uh, was, was, I believe, was killed. I woke up in the middle of the grounds in, in the garden. I don't know why um, or how I got there, but... OK. It's um... kind of coming together and... The police station is just up here, right? So... What makes you think you've been involved? There's a two-hour gap between five and seven o'clock where I was either asleep or... Is that something you might know whether I was conscious or not? We've obviously been aware of what's been going on up at the house. And we had these come off the printer a short while ago. And this is where... This, this is how it's been played out. And I don't know if these jog your memory at all. This, this is how the doctor was found. The blood spatter was uh, on the walls.
OK, this has gone far enough. Do you think you might, might yes. have done something? I think, I think I might. I think, I think I killed OK, all right. This is obviously quite a serious situation now. And um, before we go any further, I need to go make a couple of phone calls, all right? Yeah. And then we can take off from there, all right? You applied to be on one of my TV shows. Yes. Yeah. You didn't kill Dr. Black. You didn't kill Dr. Black because he isn't dead. And he isn't dead because there was no murder. And there was no murder because the whole thing was staged. It was acted. It was an experiment about how we can be manipulated by guilt and whether you would confess, whether you would hand yourself in for murder that you didn't commit. Everybody in that house was an actor. No! There's no student futures. It was just made up. <laughs> These aren't real police. We couldn't film in here. We couldn't take a camera in here. This isn't even a real police station. Look, it's not even a real building. It's made of paper. Oh, my God. to see you. I'm really cold. <laughs> One of the reasons why I chose you for this, because you're basically the nicest guy in the world, and all these guys have just yeah. fallen in love with you, and that's why you'd be the last person to ever do anything like this, which is why I wanted to use you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Would you like a drink? Um, not champagne. <laughs> Your camera up there. I convinced myself that I'd done it, and I thought, I just can't believe that I've done something like this. What have I done? I've actually killed somebody. Wow. I remembered the hotel manager had said there's only a police station and a, I think a post office um, down the road. So I walked down the road and so I put myself in. How are you um, feeling now at the moment? What's kind of. I'm relieved I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing at the end. I thought it was hilarious that, that I'd been drawn in so far and I just accepted it. <laughs> <laughs> Tim mentioned obviously in on it too. He was in on it as well. Yeah, and he was gonna cancel everything so that he could be here today, but he couldn't. He just ended up not being able to cancel it, but sends his love. I've learned that I can be easily led, certainly if there's a big enough group of people. Do you forgive us for putting right. Absolutely, I'll forgive you. I was just such a great experience, you know. It was wonderful, magnificent. Your words can't describe it.